in this video, we're going to talk about how the white race has fallen off and the many things that are happening with white people that indicate that their social dominance is in jeopardy. It is very much so in jeopardy. So we will go ahead and start with the first thing, the MGTOW movement. If you're unaware of MGTOW, it is men going their own way. And the MGTOW movement was created as a response to white men being treated like black men. Many white men would go to court, get divorced, and literally have their butts handed to them. And it was very, very, it was deeply unfair. It was deeply destabilizing. And many of these dudes committed suicide because it was so horrible. So the MGTOW movement started I'm going to say the mid 1990s because that's how long it took for collective action by white men. Once again, white men actually started the MGTOW movement because they were being un treated unfairly by the court system in society. And this is how long it took. Now the 1990s, like say 1995, 1985, 1975, it's 30 years removed from the 60s where white men very much were in charge. And literally this big shift happened because this is one, I'm about to give you some alarming statistics why white people have fallen off. The most important statistic is white people are not reproducing at a rate to replace themselves. So the white population is declining and the Hispanic population is exploding. I don't know at what point Hispanics are going to take over the majority population base in this country, but that's where we're headed. And that like, let's, let's kind of dive into that. How did it get to be where white people were not reproducing at a rate to replace themselves. This is something that the alt-right has been pressing. This is something the Ku Klux Klan has been pressing because they know that from a political standpoint, that at some point that they will not be the dominant race in America. They know this is coming and it's freaking them out. So how did it get to the point where white people were not reproducing in enough numbers to replace themselves? One word, feminism. Feminism. Feminism convinced many white women that it was a bad ideal to get married, to have children. Convinced them that it was a bad ideal. And a lot of women, and this is what's funny, this is what is hilarious about that. There are many white women who will not get married to a white guy, will not have a kid by a white guy, but will get pregnant by a black dude in a heartbeat. Currently, I know three white women who are pregnant by black dudes and they're not married. So it is, it's real interesting once you start to get into what is going on because a, a number of white women and there, there's a lot of articles why there's a lot of white women who will not date white men. Okay. I got a lot of stuff that's going on. We're getting back into training. And if you want to start a low cost business that can literally in the future, you're not going to make the money in the beginning. Let's just be 100% clear about that. But in the future that can make six figures in some cases, seven figures, what you want to do is enroll in the intellectual property school. I will teach you how to set up a YouTube channel. First of all, they're setting up a YouTube channel for tax benefits and they're setting up a YouTube channel to make money, two different things. And I'm going to show you how to do both. I'm going to show you how as a regular person with no experience, you don't even need a fancy camera. Like, you know what you need to get in the house that that's what you need. You can start with your iPhone, something that you already have in your pocket and you can start producing content. 
And as you start to make money, then you can reinvest and get fancier stuff. But in the beginning, you don't have to spend no money to get started. You can use what you already have to go ahead and begin making content and begin building out your intellectual property business. Go ahead. Once again, do not wait to July 31st because I know a lot of you are waiting for that. But go ahead. It's going to be in the comment section or it will be in the first it's in the part in the description where you can enroll in the intellectual property school go ahead and do that today because you get access to home economics you get access to the intellectual property school and i got some other special gems that are going to be happening for you so go ahead and enroll in that today do it today go ahead and get in there today There's articles like you Google it, like why I like to date white, black men. So from an intimate standpoint, the number of white families getting together and reproducing children is dramatically falling off. Like, I mean, they're at a point where they're not, they're dying off faster than they're replacing themselves, which is an interesting statistic because if you look back into the 50s and the 40s and the 30s and the 20s, white people would have three, five, six, seven kids. Now, if a white woman marries a white dude, at most they're having one children, one child, or perhaps two, which replaces the mom and the dad. But if they have one, they only replace maybe the mom and the dad. So. The birth rate replacement uh, factor is really not in white people's favor. And I recently did a video talking about the number of white women going to jail, which is crazy. Now, I skew that to the same reason that we have a lot of white men who are just going out, getting a gun and shooting people that have done nothing to them. Um, I feel that because of the breakdown of the nuclear family unit, a mom, a dad, that many of these women have lost their minds and they're getting into drugs, opioids, um, violent crimes, drug rings, prostitution. There's a YouTube channel called Soft White Underbelly. And this is this guy, his name is Mark, and he's interviewing majority of white people who are prostitutes, porn stars, drug addicts. I mean, that's the majority of the population base of the folks he interviews are white people, which are replete with dysfunction. So it's really, 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 bad and i feel that migto let's go ahead and have this conversation migto in the beginning were men who were trying to solve a problem so the beginning migto men the early migto men were masculine men trying to solve a problem I feel that the movement has morphed into a wine fest, a complain fest, versus actually seeking out solutions. All they do is commiserate and sit and complain and create these echo chambers, which makes the situation worse, doesn't improve things. And if you're looking at what has happened, and once again, going back to feminism, Feminism has corrupted the American female and many women are in competition with their men. And one of the things that I found so interesting, so interesting, and I'm about to delve off into the Craigslist protocols. I had a multitude of white women because once the thing after you do the do and you're in bed and you're having these conversations i have heard so many white women 
saying how weak white men were. It, I heard this over and over and over again, over and over and over again. And I, it, it just literally blew my mind because part of what happened to the American white male is he was socialized to be a simp. Going back from the women's rights movement, these white men were indoctrinated by their white mothers to be a simp, not to be like, you know, I'm about to kind of go back into some of the history of Alabama. We used to have this saying that in LA, which was lower Alabama, that's what we used to call it, LA, that they had white folks down there that scared white folks. These were the die hard to the bone racist white people. These were the Ku Klux Klan. These were the people that if a black person spoke back that night, they would go burn down their house. These were those kinds of crazy, take action, dangerous white people. And to a degree that has been bred out of the white race. It is very few of those active respondents in the alt-right or the Ku Klux Klan that have that type of energy. It's very, they're very, cause you know, the Ku Klux Klan, cause once, once again, there's a multitude of videos here on YouTube where black folks can go talk to the alt-right, the Ku Klux Klan, they can sit and have a conversation. Back in the days of LA, Lower Alabama, there were no conversations. If you were to go to one of these towns in Lower Alabama that was full of white people, uh, they would tell you, you need to be out of town before it gets dark or something bad was gonna happen to you. And if you were foolish enough to stay in that town after dark, they would kill you. This was the apex predator white person. They were very dangerous. They were, very, they were deeply, deeply convicted and they believed in their racist views and they would act upon their racist views. Now, those type of white people are very, very rare today. And this is one of the reasons that the white race has fallen off. Now, I know as a black person who's being exposed and harmed by these kind of white people, it's a good thing that the majority of them are gone. But for the white race, this was kind of like the attack dogs for white people. There were a multitude of white people. There were white people who would never ever go out and harm a black person, but they had their attack dogs. They had their, their armed forces of violence-based races who would do something. Like the whole conversation, picnic. Uh, if you didn't know the origins of the picnic is pick a nigger and hang him. And there, there, you can go ahead and Google these photos of white families milling about mom, dad, and the children's while black men hung from trees during these picnics. So those type of white people, the aggressive, the apex predator white people are pretty much died out. There might be one or two, you might have some who are these, uh, the Aryan nation, uh, the, the skinheads. You may have a small collection of these people around, but they're, cause literally in early America, they were in every state, they were in every city, they were everywhere. So I would say before Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement, these white people, I would say compose 30% of the white race, these active, dangerous, violent prone white people. And through feminism, through divorce, through the breakdown of the white family, these people have disappeared, which doesn't bode well, once again, like for all of the black people who have been harmed and murdered by these white people throughout history because this did not happen for a hot minute. This went on for 400 years. So we've had 
I, it started to uh, dissipate in the 1960s. So 1960, we've had 60 years of the kinder, gentler white person. And Chris Rock had a skit. It's like racism hasn't gotten better. White people have gotten nicer, which I 100% agree with that one of the reasons that racism has gotten better is white people have become nicer and more gentle and more tolerant, which is something that these apex predator white people of yesteryear, you were not living next to me. This wasn't happening. You were not going to school with my children. This wasn't happening. These folks were ardent, violent prone white people who would do something. They would do something. They would not sit by and idly let things happen. And for the last 60 years, that group of white people has been bred out of existence. Because like I said, you may have a few skinheads or a few Aryan nation, few clan members, but for the most part, because like literally, I have seen this multiple times on YouTube. There's a YouTube video called the racist nation, the racist town in America. And this brother goes and he's having conversations with these people. In the 1950s, a black person did not have conversations with racist white people. Didn't happen. They didn't talk. They did not uh, commingle. They did not get together. It did not happen. So the fact that here, and I think he did this video in 2020, that he was able to go talk to these people. They welcomed him into the school because these folks were not the apex ready, apex predator white people of yesteryear. Like I said, for the most part, those white people are gone. They're just gone. And with their disappearance, and once again, I'm not saying that this, it, this is a good thing for black folks because the number of racist, violent-based in incidents have dramatically dissipated. But for white people, this was problematic, that their attack dogs, that that fraction of white people who would do some stuff, who would handle white folk business, are pretty much bred out of existence, posed a problem for the white race because they don't have that vanguard anymore they don't have those attack dogs they don't have these policies and these because once again uh, i remember watching an episode of the jeffersons and it was something about george had donated blood and the white guy was like you should have just let me die those were the type of racist white people that actually did stuff and then let's bring in the breakdown of the white family. Um, once again, I will speak to my Craigslist protocols. And this is one of the things that's in the, this will be in the masculine frame. Many white men have been socialized to be weak, to be docile and not active nor aggressive. You, you will see it all the time, like the little com comedy skit. Security! Like a white man would not fight you, would not get rowdy with you. They would call security. They would report you to management. This is what has happened to the white race. Because Steve Harvey has a skit talking about firing a black person and firing a white person and the big difference. And once again, the average white person is harmless, is harmless and docile. And when you look at the breakdown, because what happened to the black family unit, because I want you to think the black family unit endured racism, slavery and Jim Crow and remained um, intact for the longest period of time through all of that hardship, horror, and savagery perpetrated on black folks. The black family unit endured unspeakable racial violence. And all it took 
was hypergamy, giving the black woman that government cheese, food stamps, housing, and medical care to tear apart the black family. Guess what happened to the white people? Same thing. White women were put in a position where if they were married to a white man, they would go to court and that white man would literally get his cheeks busted. I don't care if this guy, I remember when I was dealing with some stuff with child support court, this one guy was telling me all of a sudden I'm a drunk, I'm an alcoholic. And what will happen is these white women would go into court, start crying, it's, it's so horrible, your honor. And then the judge would put on a draconian like child enforcement payments. Uh, frequently, one of the reasons that they had to roll back a lot of this stuff is they were putting undue child support payments on men. Men were paying, had child support awards for women on income they didn't even make. This is how crazy it was. This is how um, insane it was. And this went on for a long, 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 long time. And this was the birth of Big Toe. And once again, the original Big Toe men were masculine, active men seeking solutions. Now what happened is the Big Toe movement has morphed into a complaining fest, a bunch of whiners, a bunch of do-nothings. And one of the things that is happening, and I'm gonna say something, because for those of you who know, there are some of you who are listening to me know this because you've experienced this. It is easier for a dominant, masculine, black man to get most white women than it is for a white male to get a white woman. I know that sounds completely preposterous, but once again, look at who their heroes are. There's only one Kardashian who only dates white people. There's one, the rest of them all date black. And the Kardashians have hundreds of millions of followers on the Instagram. This is who's representing and the Kardashians are not even white. <laughs> they're like some ethnic group. I think they're Armenian or something like that, but they present white and they pose white. So for all practical intensive purposes, they are white, even though from an ethnic standpoint, they're not white. And this is who their heroes are. Like, you know, once again, uh, when I put up Disruptive Mail, there was a lot of people who couldn't believe the receipts that I was posting. And part of this happened because of the intentional weakening of the white male, because that's where it started. First of all, the white male had his family torn apart. And then from an institutional and social perspective, the white male has been dramatically weakened. Now, you will still see that most professional football, player, football uh, team owners and NBA team owners are old white men. There's not one young white dude who owns a team. They're all old billionaires. And in the future, you will see black ownership represented in the NBA and in the NFL in the future because that old vanguard, because it still looks like white people are in charge, but who are the white people who are in charge? It is that old vanguard. It's not young white people who are in charge. It is like, I feel that Robert, like the guy, Jerry Jones, who owns the Dallas Cowboys, he's like almost 90 years old. So at some point they're gonna die. Once again, the Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, he's like 80, 70 something, 80 years old. So this is what you see from an ownership perspective, a bunch of old white guys who are throwbacks from the old white race. The new white race, it don't get down like that. How do I know this? 
Who is out here struggling? White people. Who is running to OnlyFans? Young white women. Who's running the porn? Young white women. See, you got to segment the the factors because you cannot look at, because once again, if you look at the, the CEOs of corporations, once again, you will see a bunch of old white men. But as, we, as they die off, you're going to see a changing of the guard. There's something that's happening in corporate America that's, there's a lot of Indian CEOs in these tech companies. So what you're going to see going forward, you're going to see more Indian CEOs, you're going to see more Hispanic CEOs, you're going to see more black CEOs. But as this old white race, as the old vanguard, like I said, you have to segment this because it is not the young white people who are in charge. Now, I will say from a social media standpoint, the biggest names in social media are young white people because they're supported by young white people. I was uh, doing a channel analysis and all I saw in the comment sections were white people. So from a social media standpoint, the white people support white people, but in the future, that's going to change. That's going to change because the white race is losing power every day. And this is why a lot of them are freaking out. This is why a lot of them are losing their minds. This is why you have so many single white males going out, getting a gun and just shooting people. They're losing their shit. They're losing their shit. And as we go forward, it's going to get worse because one of the biggest issues that is happening with white people is the dramatic increase in single white female mothers. That is one of the biggest factors in the deconstruction of the white nuclear family. Remember, leave it to Beaver. Remember, um, what was that show with Opie, Tom Howard, as he was a little boy, he was on this show. The Andy Griffin show. If you would look at shows like Family, you, you know, um, once again, The Great White Savior, Different Strokes, Mr. Willis. You will see that that America doesn't exist anymore. Because once again, I look at stuff like Freakonomics looks at, because I ask myself, why doesn't the porn industry have no problem getting hot, sexy women to come on camera and go do these acts? There is no shortage of young white women who will get into porn. They, they, they're essentially what they bring them in is they bring them in. She's the new girl and they, they, they literally wear her out maybe have her do 60, 100 films, and then they'll on to the next one, on to the next one. And once again, if you will look at OnlyFans, who is on the OnlyFans? Young white women. See, one of the things that you will see, and this is the degradation of America, is chatterbait. Chatterbait. Uh, if you don't know what Chatterbait is, it's a cam site where you can see women, couples, transsexuals come on camera and be butt naked and do things. And one of the things I've noticed is you have a lot of couples. I mean, a ton of couples. You know, someone who's maybe a boyfriend, girlfriend, and they will come on camera and have sex. They will have sex. And these are young white couples. And I was just sitting there like, why would you do that? Because they need money. Because the dominant uh, white power structure is gone. And it once again, it goes back to manufacturing. When we abdicated manufacturing from America, 
this created a lot of bad outcomes. I mean, a lot of bad outcomes because who did the manufacturing base benefit the most? Middle class white America. That's who benefited the most from the um, situation of having that robust manufacturing base. This is who benefited white America. And when that disappeared, that hollowed out white America. And then you add divorce and the breakdown of the white family. Then this is one of the things that you have. Like I can speak from my knowledge of the Craigslist protocols. That there's a ton of single white mothers. There, there's a ton of them. There are more single white mothers now than they've ever been before. And we're seeing it in society. These little girls are growing up without a father. These little boys are growing up without a masculine role model. So you have these children who are growing up because I, I know y'all are going to hate. I said this, but the old America where a man would wife up a single mother because th this is how it used to be. A single mother didn't stay single long because at that point in time, women were submissive. A woman would meet someone, of good character, he had a good job, they would get married and he would adopt those kids. That was normal. That was normal. Now we have the messaging, stay away from single mothers. Stay away from single mothers, do not become a stepfather. And that right there has been dramatically harmful to white females. Because it used to be, if a white female was cute, attractive, and submissive, whether she had two, three kids, she can get a man. She can get a man real easy. I mean, get a man to marry her. That's going away. That's going away. So what we're having is the deconstruction of the white race. And it's like, once again, Jerry Jones, like I, I looked at um, Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. He's like 80 some years old. And in the next 10 years, we're gonna see Jerry Jones probably die. Uh, Robert Kraft died. We're gonna see a lot of these NFL, Arthur Blank, he's like 80 years old. So we're gonna see a big changing of the guard for these NFL teams and these NBA teams. <clears throat> I think Mark Cuban is one of the youngest NBA owners but the vast majority of them are old white men. Once again, the old white man power structure is very much alive. However, there are not that many of them. There are not that many rich white billionaires. It's, it's literally a handful. So as they die off and their fortunes are splintered, because if there was only one Walmart hair, they would be the richest person in the world. But there's like, five or six of them that are getting trust fund money out that fortune. But what you're going to see is a big changing of the guard. And one of the things, the good news is here is for the progressive black man, there's so much opportunity. There is so much opportunity for you out here in this world right now. There's so much opportunity that it, it is staggering. For the progressive black woman, there's so much opportunity out here. It is staggering. But for folks who grew up in the old power structure, it's gone. And once these old billionaires start to die off, and you're going to see, like the next 10 years, you're going to see a big shift in the power structure. You're going to see a big shift because Will the white race ever die out? No, they will not. There's too many of them. They're not ever going to die out, but their time at being at the top of the pyramid, it's coming to an end. And that is bad news for the white power structure. Bad, bad news.